Let's examine. So now that we discussed what the beta decay is, let's actually take a look at the following example that deals with one. So determine how much energy is released into the surroundings when a neutral carbon-14 atom undergoes a beta decay. So let's assume that the mass of the neutral carbon is 14.003234 unified atomic mass units and the mass of our neutral nitrogen-14 is 14.003074 unified atomic mass units. So let's begin by writing our beta decay reaction. So basically this is the general formula for any beta decay. So we have the parent nucleus that is designated by the X that breaks into our daughter nucleus designated by X prime as well as releasing our electron given by the beta particle plus an antineutrino given by V with the bar symbol on top. Now what exactly is the parent nucleus? Well in this case we know that we begin with the neutral carbon 14 and so this X is equal to C which stands for carbon, the Z the atomic number is 6, number of protons and the number of nucleons is given by 14. So that means in this parent nucleus we have 6 protons and 8 neutrons. Now, what exactly is the X prime? So according to this equation, we know the A remains the same, the number of nucleons remains the same, but the atomic number increases by 1 because one neutron inside the nucleus of our parent atom basically breaks down into a proton which remains inside the nucleus of our atom, so that's why we form a new a nitrogen atom with an atomic number of plus one and the number of neutrons decreases by one because that neutron breaks down into the proton and that basically releases our electron into the surroundings as well as our antineutrino. So this nitrogen has one more proton, one less neutron, but the total number of nucleons remains unchanged. It's still 14. So that means this is our formula that describes this particular beta decay. So to calculate how much energy is released when we go from the reactant side to the product side, let us actually calculate what the change in mass is what exactly is the decrease in mass. So we're going to make the assumption that the neutrino or the antineutrino has a mass that is zero and that assumption makes sense because in fact our antineutrino has a very very tiny mass much smaller than the mass of the electron or the mass of our proton or neutron. So what is the change in mass? So we go from this to this. Now notice one important thing about our daughter nucleus that is produced. So this neutral or this nitrogen actually has a positive charge and that's because initially we begin with the carbon that is neutral which contains six electrons and then we basically produce one proton. So that means we have six electrons and we have seven protons. So the charge on this one is a positive one. So we have a positive one charge and a negative one charge here coming from our electron that is released from our nucleus and the net charge is zero which makes sense because we begin with a net charge of zero so by the conservation of charge we have to produce a system that has also a net charge of zero. So that basically 
basically means if we take this nitrogen with a positive one charge and add the quantity of mass on one electron, that gives us a system that contains six protons or uh, seven protons, seven neutrons, and seven electrons, which is basically the mass of this nitrogen 14, which is assumed to be neutral. So we have 14.003074 unified atomic mass units is the mass of these two systems. So we're assuming that the mass of our antineutrino is zero. And so to find the change in mass, we take mass initial and subtract mass fine or mass initial subtract mass final. And that gives us how much mass is decreased when we go along the following direction. So this minus this gives us 0 0.000168 unified atomic mass units. Now to actually use this in our rest mass equation to calculate the energy change or the energy release, we have to convert into kilograms. So we multiply this amount in unified atomic mass units by the conversion factor of 1.6606 times 10 to negative 29 kilograms per U, the U's cancel and we're left with about 2.79 times 10 to negative 31 kilograms. Now, what is the energy released? So we have a decrease in mass and that decrease in mass is basically transformed into energy and we use the rest mass energy equation. So the change in mass is equal to, or the change in energy is equal to the product of the change in mass in kilograms and the square of the speed of light in a vacuum. And we get that our energy in joules is about 2.51 times 10 to negative 14 joules or equivalently about 0 0.157 mega electron volts. So basically this is by how much more stable the product products are than our reactants. This is how much energy is released when this specific beta decay reaction takes place. <laughs>